Hello everyone, Rebecca here from The Companion. I want to tell you a little bit about the clip that you're about to watch. It's from an interview that my co-host and I did on Three Fry Short with Amanda Tapping last October. The whole interview is all about DIY things like home remedies and home improvements, but inevitably, like usual for Three Fry Short, the conversation steered at one point towards mental health. The clip you're about to watch is all about emotional shrapnel and when you need to put those shields or those walls up. I thought it was a really appropriate clip to share with you now, as this Saturday, my co-hosts and I are going to be once again interviewing Amanda, this time on The Companion, for part three of Embracing Mental Health as a Fandom. Have you ever just walked into a space? Again, this is another question. I think about that. Like, what do you do when you walk into a space and you just know it's off, but you don't really know why? Does that happen to you? And you're just like, oh yeah. I remember like like this, we're going back decades when Alan yeah. and I were looking at a, our first apartment together. Mm -hmm. And we went, there was one at the top of this house, and we walked up the stairs and opened the door. And I went in and I went, nope. <laughs> I turned around and I started down the stairs and Alan said, what is it? And I said, something is not, no, we're not living there. I've seen this in a horror movie before. Yeah. And those people exactly. stayed and that did not turn out well. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. I love that. Like bad, bad mojo. And we shoot in a place, uh, we film in a place called Riverdale, uh, Riverview, mm -hmm. sorry, Riverdale. Riverdale. <laughs> Riverview, which is a, a, an old abandoned psychiatric hospital that a mm, lot of people. Yeah film in. Uh, mm. Parts of it are still active, but one of the main buildings that we shoot in is called the Crease Clinic. And it's because Crease, Dr. Crease did a lot of work with electroshock therapy in this building. And it's Ooh. a huge building. And there are places in that building that just don't feel right. Did you find? Is that Riley? <laughs> She's like, pay attention, pay attention. Who are you talking to? Maybe more treats. So yeah. she wants more tre where are my treats, lady? Yeah. You're, talking about You're talking about making them. <laughs> it's so cute. It's the sweetest little mom, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so that where you're shooting. So has that impacted you? Do you have a hard time if you're in spaces that feel that kind of bad or negative energy? Like, and you have to be in it. I, yeah. it. How do you deal with that when you have to leave that space? Like I, I have to, I have to protect myself going into those spaces, like mm -hmm. sort of cover my solar mm -hmm. plexus and, and mm -hmm. uh, I have to, yeah, I just, cause I, I, I feel, and I'm not like an empath. I'm not saying that I pick up on, mm -hmm. you know, people who have passed, but I feel like I, I am the type of person that if I see something, somebody suffering or it really hits me. Mm -hmm. And so when I go into places where I feel like there's been suffering or you feel this negative energy, mm -hmm. I just, yeah. And because my eldest brother spent time in a psychiatric hospital, it, mm. it's a bit, big trigger for me. Yeah. And so I have to be super careful when I go into those places to just focus on mm. the work, and not think about, you know, where I am necessarily, which is mm -hmm. not a great way to live life. But it's only there. It's the, the yeah. only place where I feel really triggered. So I just yeah. have to just have to be aware of it. I have to walk into the space going, I know that this is a space that can upset me. So I just. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's, yeah, you, whatever walls you got to throw up to get through something yeah. like that, too. Um, yeah. I did that a ton in EMS, too. Just like, okay, let me put myself in this, like, metal box and of course walk into know. this situation. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Rebecca, of course you do. It's interesting. And it's hard because then you, you're like, I want to process, you know, what I'm feeling. But I also, you have to do the job in the space. Mm -hmm. And then you know, hopefully you take time for yourself. We're going back into the mental health talk, but hopefully you take time for yourself okay. afterwards yeah. to, um, mm -hmm. to think about it, you know? So do you have like, when you're working, do you have other counselors to talk to you guys? Cause you must mm -hmm. see some pretty awful things. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we have, we have a, a peer peer support group and then there's also counselors. So okay. anytime something, something bad happens and everybody knows about it, they will activate that peer support group no matter what. And people will get checked in on whether they ask for right. it or not. And then as it progresses, then they can determine, like, do, do they need to talk to somebody else or, like, go further with it and things like that. So, yeah, there are systems in place for sure. For sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, I even, when I see a fender bender, I get upset. <laughs> I'm like, oh, those yeah. poor people. Well, oh, on a Friday. Oh. 
Uh, it's weird though, because when you do box it up, you kind of don't think about it the same way. And all of a sudden I'll find myself starting to tell a story to people who I'm like, oh, I need to not be telling you this story. <laughs> like, because I just don't think about it that same way. It's really yeah. weird. Or suddenly but, you're mm -hmm. crying for no reason. Yep. Mm -hmm. Done that. Yeah. Done that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Which, I, and again, it's important to acknowledge. But, hi. She, she just wants all the attention. Um, yeah. I saw a woman the other day that reminded me of my mom. Mm. What I imagine my mom would be like now or mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. of years from now. She had the same coat that my mom had, this little mm -hmm. puffy coat. And she was walking across the street with a walker. And I was just like in my car, just going, oh, God, that if my mom were still alive, that might be her. And, Aww. you know, all these little moments, right? Yeah. These little mm -hmm. moments throughout the day that you kind of, we deflect. We spend a lot of time in our day deflecting, right? I don't want to yeah. boom, 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 boom. I, yep. I don't have the energy or the time to deal with this. And I've got to get from point A to point B and whatever mm -hmm. I've got to do. So, yeah. uh, but then you, I think it's really important at the end of the day or whenever you have the chance to just sort of, reflect on it and then let it go with a sense of peace rather than mm -hmm. betting. Like I've talked about before where I feel like we, right. <laughs> um, like I feel like uh, we, especially as women, and I'm not, uh, I'm not saying men don't do this as well, but I think for women, uh, I can speak from that experience. We let things embed in our flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit, yeah. But this in the mental health podcast, but the shitty things that people have said and mm -hmm. uh, or things that have happened and we let it embed. And then we end up walking around super heavy. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm so heavy sometimes. And I've started now in the last few years to like pull the pieces of shrapnel out, take a look at them and go, yeah, I don't need you anymore. Like mm -hmm. you're not. Me. That's what yeah. I thought. And so I think that's important too, that we sort of go, oh man, that like, that's why my neck is so, because of this shitty thing that happened. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Uh, and again, it all, I think, not to sort of take it away from the holistic DIY stuff, but all of that helps me, mm -hmm. you know, making the fireside or making it like doing things that I think are good for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all part of taking care of our mental health as well. Yeah. As our I was just going to ask, like, it sounds like that's just like a way of grounding yourself, making sure when you are back in your space, you are grounded and you have a safe space. And I think that's where um, I hope people listening kind of get that idea of like, if you don't feel like you have your safe space in your home or in your place, like what are things you could do to start? How are ways? Because like we do encounter these things where we do have to put up these shields around ourselves if we're, but we have to take care of ourselves too. And that can be hard, but mm -hmm. whether it is the, DIY, or if it's scents and aromas, and making sure you have the right candles and like smell. If you enjoyed this interview, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's a zero cost way to support us. If you have comments or an idea on topics and guests you'd like us to consider, please put them into the comment section on YouTube. Another zero cost way to follow us at The Companion is by signing up to our free newsletter. And by doing so, we will send you more videos interviews, and announcements to our live stream events. If you'd like to hang out with us directly, we have a vibrant Discord community. A link will be in the description below. The team and I are on there every single day. Last and certainly not least, thank you for being a companion.